Here we go. This is a good one. Oh, I love that. The spring bobber just barely moves and you lay into him. That rod just lays over. Two pound test, you just take your time. Oh yeah, look at that, nice crappie, nice crappie. Look at that, fish is giving me all I can handle. Take, oh, look at this, Scott. Oh, that is a slab, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I tell you what, I mean, it's yeah, it's early ice. You know, we've got six, seven inches of ice out here. People are just starting to get after it here this fall or this winter. Look at that. Oh my word. <laughs> Fun, 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 man. A nice tall one. Look at that, huh? <laughs> Isn't that just gorgeous? Look at that. Big old bucket mouth on them. You get small, medium, and large, and this is one of them large ones. Oh yeah, nice big crappie. <laughs> Wow, gorgeous pike right there. Here they showed up. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at these fish. Doesn't take much to break. <laughs> they are cats. rushing up. There he is, there he is. Cannibalistic jumbos. Unbelievable. The whole, the big one. That is what we're talking about today, that cool looking fish. Now you're dialed in. Oh, that's fun. It's like a phone fish, you know what? Right back down to the bottom. It's one of the powerful freshwater fish that swim. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a nice walleye. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by Clam, Shields, Vexilar, Ice Armor by Clam, K-Drill, Clam Pro Tackle, Ice Defense, Bismarck Motor Company, Crestliner, North Dakota Tourism, and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods. Well, it's middle of December. We're just starting to get out on the ice. It's amazing if you draw a line from, say, Park Rapids to Brainerd and then down through Detroit Lakes. If you go north or west, there's some fishable ice. But if you get south, southern Minnesota, Iowa, Big parts of Wisconsin, there's no safe ice. So we're up in that Park Rapids area today, we're just exploring some lakes. And basically when we get in these locations, we're just drilling these big grids, just drill a big grid of holes, and just so we can get out some bluegills and crappies. A lot of times catching panfish is all about working the grid. Yeah, that's uh, not a bad one. Definitely a nice one. Say they're just nice and tall, thick bluegills. Got some more down there. There, we got them. Oh, nice crappie. <laughs> Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Love this. Just a little drop jig with a silky on it, one single spike. Yeah, fun stuff. It was just such a cool strike the way that fish came in. Oh, <laughs> you know, that fish came up, oh, I don't know, maybe three, four feet off, but three feet off the bottom. I thought it was a bass or a pike. That's what's kind of cool about this spot here is you don't know what you're gonna catch. You know, you look at early ice, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of exploration to do. I mean, you try a lot of things that don't work, you know, and that's okay, but every lake will have its own personality. Every lake will have different tendencies, but so you look at a contour map of this particular lake, and you've got these shallow flats, and these shallow island complexes that are, say, less than 10 feet of water, that have the type of bottom where there's a lot of weed growth. No matter where panfish swim, if you're looking for bluegills and crappies, is that you can't go wrong finding sharp breaks that have weeds on them. They might be on top, they might be on the bottom, or they might be on the break, but those sharp breaks that have weeds are just high percentage, high batting average locations, it seems like no matter where bluegills and crappies swim. And these are the types of locations where we're finding fish today, right next to that sharp break on that basin.
I'm really pounding that jig hard, try to pull them in, but I'm not marking fish. And when I'm marking fish, it's just, just the softest twitch on that spring bobber. You're just, sometimes just getting that spring bobber just to quiver. A lot of times that movement will just come out of your spring. Of course, some of these big crappies are just dunking that spring bobber. That's always fun. Oh, oh, there's one. Oh yeah, that's got some pull to it. Oh yeah, it's racing around though. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> look at the size of that crappie. What about this one, Jason? Do you think that's a decent crappie or what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is fun. This is crazy, it's, it's crazy fun, man. So something new this year is the Silky a Clam came out with an awesome panfish bait. You don't need to use bait when you're using the Silky. I use a lot of whites, pink and uh, reds, putting it on a drop kick. A lot of times I'm using a number uh, 12 and number 10, depends on the mood of the fish, on what size I use. But definitely, uh, you know, you kind of T-bone that uh, Silky on there and then I I'll probably tip it with a couple maggots, three maybe. It's definitely a awesome panfish uh, bait to, to catch uh, gills and crappies. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. If these walls could talk, oh, you'd hear stories. And all of them get better every time they're told. Because you've got 40 inch gators out there, giant lakers, crappies, sunnies, and walleye. So many walleye. Get ready because soon we'll be walking on water. Shields. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, what's my favorite series of hubs? The Clam C Series shelters work best for us. What's our favorite ice sub shelter? The X Series from Clam Outdoors. <laughs> Choose the hub shelter that's right for you at Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. Attention, ice anglers. If you or a loved one have suffered from catching complications, looming boredom, or overwhelming humiliation among your peers, call the Vexlar Group today. If you fish blind like a frozen zombie, you may be eligible to catch fish this year. If you've ever found yourself saying, you know, it's just nice to be out, you may be a struggling angler and we know you're hurting. Please help stop this angling epidemic today by visiting www.vexlar.com. My name is Sam Sobey, and I approve this message. Introducing the Rise Float Suit with Motion Float Technology. Breathable, waterproof, secure, and all the features that make the difference. Waterproof cell phone pocket, rapid drain system, and maximum flexibility. Fish with security in the Rise Float Suit from Ice Armor by Clam. Rise above. Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. So, you know, you get these smaller jigs. You know, you can use a palomar knot. You can use an improved clinch knot. But these eyelets get really small. Especially for a palaver knot, it can be really hard to go back and forth through the eye. And so a really good knot, basically use a Snell knot, which this is a really old knot that's been around in ice fishing for a long time. Back in the day, we used to have these little marmuscas with a hole going right through the head. And you'd run the line through the hole, then tie your Snell knot on because the, the jigs actually didn't have a, a metal eye. And so it's basically the same knot, you're, especially when you have the perpendicular hole on the jig. You run your line once through the hole, you just bring it through and you loop it. And the beauty of this, is that your horizontal jig will stay horizontal. It's a really a strong knot. You slide your plastic up on it and it seems like it helps it stay. It's a fairly easy knot to tie even when your fingers are cold. Your jig always stays the right angle. But yeah, just take a Snell knot or the old Marmuska knot. Works really good on light line. Oh, fish came alive. Oh yeah, look at that. What do you got there? <laughs> a nice, oh, my word. tall one. Look at that, huh? <laughs> Isn't that just gorgeous? Look at that, how much longer that fish is in the hole. There, look at that. 
Love it when they get those big ears. That is just cool. There she goes. Now I've been playing with colors. I know Scott's been using whites and pinks. I really love this color across the board, this gold with brown. But when you look at that silky in the water, what intrigues me about is it looks to me just like a back swimmer. You know, back swimmers are just a very common, predominant invertebrate from the water, an insect that bluegills in particular love to eat. And it's durable. You can use it all day. You're not going to wear it all. We always said plastics are durable. <laughs> Silkies are durable. It's more like a bucktail or a marabou jig. Quality bluegill. See that six inch hole. That fish has got to be longer than three inches past the hole pretty easily. That's just gorgeous. You know, and that's what's interesting about this too, is that the fishing community, biologists, they're starting to find out more and more about big panfish, big bluegills in particular, where you take big bluegills, you know, bluegills over nine inches. I think everybody would agree that 30 years ago, that type of fish was a lot more common. And it's easy to outfish or fish out those bigger panfish pretty easily. And so as we're learning more as anglers, it's you know, becoming really, oh, there's a nice coffee. We're starting to realize that throw back the big fish, keep that medium sized fish to eat. And then that's what maintains your panfish fisheries. It's big bluegills. In my mind are just as much of a trophy as any other fish species. You know, every day can be different, you know, but today, you know, we found fish on the bottom of the break out off the flat, you know, anywhere from say 13 out to 16 feet of water. And, you know, when these fish run these basins, you know, they're typically moving, you know, you're usually not going to find fish just sitting in one spot. And so that was kind of the case where, you know, you drill your grid of holes so that way you can move and can be nimble and flexible and stay with the fish. And, you know, you'll drop your transducer into two or three holes in a row where you won't hardly see anything. You know, the next hole could be the hole where you catch 10 fish or three fish or five fish, or whatever. You wear out your welcome, the fish get hard to catch. You know, the fish gets smaller and then you just keep your search. And so a lot of times, you know, you're moving and grooving all day, you know, and you're picking up a few fish here and a few fish there. You might have one or two good flurries in a day, you know, but over the course of the day, the fish add up. Gotta be a bigger one in this mess. Might be this one. Could be, could be, another crappie. Oh, yeah. well, jumped right out of the hole. <laughs> Here we go. I'm gonna show you guys how to put one of these silkies on. This white and red has been working out really good for me, but just taking right through the ball there, put your hook, you see it's gonna come out the other side, and then you're gonna slide it all the way up. So you're just gonna see that that's gonna dance down there. It's definitely an amazing uh, look down there once you drop them in the hole. Then what I've been doing is actually putting three maggots on. That's kind of been my uh, go-to bait the last couple days here we've been fishing and catching you know it's a combination of bluegills crappies even bass and uh, pike that uh, silky is amazing here we go good one <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> You can almost tell when it's a crappie when they come in, they just come in high and they come in fast. Look at that, that's beautiful. Big old bucket mouth on them. <laughs> I got another one down there, so race back down, come on. It seems like wherever we drill a hole, wherever we drop a transducer down, there's all kinds of little perch right on the bottom. You know, when these crappies or bluegills come in, I mean, you'll just, I mean it's just gonna be a, just a good, strong signal. There's small marks that are darting up from the bottom and darting down fast. Don't even waste your time on those fish. That's not what you're looking for. There he is. Oh! <laughs> What do we have here? This is a good one. Oh, look at this. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. These are just beautiful fish. I got more of them down there. So is that still three uh, three feet off the bottom? or? Yeah, three yeah. feet off the bottom. If I go any deeper, if I go right on the bottom, all I'm getting are those little perch. Yeah. Here they come. Oh. Love it when the reel handle goes backwards on the hook set. Oh yeah, there's a bluegill. It's funny, you won't see nothing, then you'll get 10 minutes where you just get three feet of fish that settle underneath you. So, you know, you start dropping down to one, two pound test, you really gotta be careful with the rod action. You know, your rod action's gotta complement the line. And so I'm just using a spooler reel. Again, you know, you can pull that line off the spooler reel. That line hangs nice and straight for longer periods of time. You know, there's probably a lot of misinformation out there as far as spinning reels, spooler reels. Both have their place. I still use a spinning reel a lot for panfish. What I find is that on every reel, you're gonna get twisted line. You know, you reel in a bluegill, what does it do? It's fighting in a circle. You pound that jig hard, you're building up twist in the line. But with a spooler reel or this style of reel, I think what happens, you can manage your line where you can get say five, six days of hard fishing out of your line before you have to change it. Where the spinning reel, you might get two or three days. But this particular rod here with the short handle, this is a clam straight drop. You just got a real sensitive soft spring bobber, but you just see that it's that nice light taper, which is really nice for panfish. One, two pound test, it just loads up nice, but just a real nice setup. Two pound frost fluorocarbon down to a size 12 gold drop jig, silky, one spike. And that to me is just a deadly panfish setup. Look at that one. So we get uh, into that low light uh, evening bite when that sun's getting close to hitting the trees, you start catching bigger ones like this. So definitely try fishing the prime time. Fun, 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 man. I got a big one here. Look at that. That is a bluegill. Arr. Look at that, I just love them when they get that tall, look how tall that fish is. Get that tall hump back. Enjoy your freedom. I like it when there's multiple fish on the screen because usually they fight over it. There we go. I'm sure like catching these things. Doesn't matter if they're big or small, but these are actually some nicer bluegills, so. Early ice like this, I, I think these fish are a little bit more aggressive. So they're biting a lot harder. They're chasing your lures a lot more. Just these fish that we're catching today, they're chasing the lures. You know, they're three feet off the bottom and sometimes they run up to six feet off the bottom. As you aggressively jig them fish, you just keep moving them up the water column, bring them fish up and then making them bite. And using these soft rod tips, it's just an awesome feel. And then things that double over your rods like that. So uh, it's, a, it, it's a good time. This is a good one. Oh, look at this one. Wow. Taking out drag. Look at that. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, we've done so many shows over the years, you know, where we're using big baits, big spoons, big swim lures, you know, to catch crappies. But every once in a while, these fish want a little bit of finesse. You know, and you gotta be a little bit more careful, take your time bringing them in, but boy, that is fun. That is fun. Some of these fish have been coming in so fast on the Vexar, it almost reminds me of a lake trout. Just, you know, just get that really fast burn. Hey, funny how you can tell when them crappies come in, they're usually shooting past it. Once in a while you see that mark go right by it, they miss it, but then you see them turn around and come back and then they smack it again, so. Yeah, that's cool. One thing that I'd like to do is I like to have a couple rods tied up. I do have a uh, 
Pinhead minnow on one. Silver and blue is kind of my favorite color for crappies. We know we're catching some big crappies. And if they don't bite the pinhead, then I have that uh, drop kick and silky ready to go with a couple maggots on it. But a lot of my jigs, uh, the dingle drop, drop kick, multicolors, it's definitely a, a lot of variety. I, I do like to use a lot of reds and a lot of glows. I definitely have all my uh, jigs ready to go just to be tied on. So, you know, clam makes this nice little uh, thin tackle box, fits right in your pocket, but you can just see I got a variety of different jig colors. Uh, I do like to use golds and reds and whites. Yeah, come, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, oh, come here. Oh. Right in the top of the mouth. See that, that silk is just on a tiny rubber ball. You see how many fish I've caught on this today? Unbelievable. You know, I first caught wind of these last, late last winter. Dave Ginn's actually doing some stuff with some prototypes. I'm just anxious to try it. Every once in a while you might have to slide it, and fix it a little bit, but here they come. There he is. Look at that. Pulling out Greg, whatever it what is. What you got there? It looks pretty nice. Yes, it does. Oh yeah, nice big crappie. <laughs> Oh, come here. Oh, that's fun. With panfish, there's times where you have to scale down, especially during the middle of the day. You know, going subtle, going small, small profiles. When that's needed, I mean, that's what you have to do. And we've seen a lot of lakes, especially with the invasion of zebra mussels, clear water, higher pressure metro lakes. We've seen it more and more where you drop down a two pound, sometimes even one pound test, and you get down to size 12, size 14, and I mean, they just eat it. And if you try to go big, try to get too aggressive, you know, you just can't get those fish to respond. That one might be a little bit nicer. Wow, <laughs> look at that one. Holy. That is a crappie, Scott. That's, wow. Like I said, it's it's amazing that the size of these fish, you know, they're just giants. You know, you get a wide variety of sizes. You get small, medium, and large, and this is one of them large ones. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Nice work. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Having a ball, I tell you. Um, up they here fight in northern hard, Minnesota, early ice, and, you know, there's not a lot of people around, so that's the good thing. We're not being pressured by a bunch of people out here fishing. Um, we're letting all these fish go, and, you know, people will catch these fish another day. So, and hopefully they grow for next time we come here. It's, uh, that turns into a two-pounder, you know. A great day. Let's go get some more. <laughs>